And now we're going to delay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I'll call the meeting to order. Okay. Time, 6.02. Um, the board's going to recognize Tricky 4A1X, State Championship, Cast, and Crew. Take it away. Okay. Do you want to first, uh, I'm going to have them tell you who they are and what they do, because last year I forgot a name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I'm Xander Jackson, and I play Mr. Fox. Uh, I'm Ethan Hoggard, I play Mole, or Banjo. <laughs> uh, I'm Josie Shelton, and I play the narrator and badger and farmer B. I'm Avery, I play Farmer Buns and Mrs. Fox. I'm Alec, and I play two of the Fox children. I'm Aaron Tibble, I play uh, two of the Fox children and Rat. <coughs> I'm Daphne Booty, and I play Mabel and Boggess. I'm Grace Jackson, I am Crew, and I play Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Ann Heim, and I play Rabbit slash The Accordion. Um, I'm Casey Shelton, I play the mandolin, and I'm a weasel. <laughs> um, I'm Sif Pintelli, I do shadow puppets. I'm Hudson Wilson, and I am on the crew, and I'm a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Corey Bailey, and I run the light board. Uh, Abram Leslie, uh, I'm also a weasel, and I play guitar. So, uh, the play is Fantastic Mr. Fox is based on the children's book by Roald Dahl. And uh, I, I've never actually done a children's show before, and probably won't again. But, but this was actually a really great experience. But I, I wanted something completely different than last year's because I felt like it, it's going to be hard to live up to. So let's do something completely different. And we started this process, and uh, it, you know, there are like little foxes that are puppets and things like that. So I'm like, this is great. I'll use my fine arts classes to make paper mache animals, and it'll be great. And that was a disaster because you, we have some. If you want some like unidentifiable animals, uh, they're like blobs on a stick. Uh, but you know, it, it was a good time, and we we learned a lot about that process. Um, but this is a show that really, once we got into it. I I didn't couldn't crack the code like it it was just bad and it just kept being bad and I couldn't figure out how to fix it and I kept telling people this is not our year and then uh, then the kids fixed it like the kids came in and fixed it we we had these musicians I knew we wanted to open and close with a song and so I got these kids who can play instruments and I'm like all right here's what we need and they went away at rehearsal and I worked with the actors and they went to the lobby and worked on the song and then they came back and they played the song and it was great. And I'm like, okay, so you're center stage the whole show and just keep playing. And that's what we do and we just do the play around the musicians. And all of the good stuff that happens in the show, that, like I, I have a pretty healthy ego, but I will tell you, if you see the show, all the stuff you like is them and their ideas. And I was like, great, we'll back, get back to stuff I know next year. So, uh, so they really came through and did it. I had, I was, I, I decided to downsize this year. So we went from ten kids to fifteen because I'm bad at math. And uh, but it's been great. They've all been great. I couldn't be prouder. And we're all, just on behalf of all of them, um, incredibly grateful to the school and Cherokee, the community and the board, um, for letting us do this and the support. Like it, the support is overwhelming. It's almost too much sometimes. Like it's like. <laughs> We don't need all this stuff, but we do. So you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But like, it's it's. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say thank you. Uh, but I am so grateful for all of the support because it really is like it's not like this anywhere else. You can talk to any. I um. There's a. a I shouldn't actually tell the story, but there, there was a a speech coach that was introducing me to a, one of her kids, and she's like, "This is Mr. Paris. He's from Cherokee." And, and somehow she was talking about how, like, they treat him like he's the football coach. And, and I was, well, because it's, a, you know, football coaches are important. Well, that's what I, I, I was, no, but then I said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's they, nobody, nobody questions my place. 
So, uh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but, uh, I just got fired. But, uh, uh, anyway, the point is, like, it really is like, this is, uh, every year people ask me, like, they're worried that I'm leaving, and that's just because I vent a lot to the kids. And they're like, I know I think he's really leaving this year. And I'm not, I'm just venting, because I'm angry at them. <laughs> but uh, but they're great, and this it's I can't express uh, my gratitude enough to all of you in the community. So I think that's all I have. When dates for here? Uh, Saturday and Sunday. So this Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. at seven o'clock and Sunday at two o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I and asked Hudson, but I didn't have a pin, and yeah. so I remember now. Yeah. Saturday. They're on the principal report too. If you look there. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, too shitty. Can I ask them some questions? Yeah. So I I would like this to hear from you guys because I I know you put in a ton of work, but when do you start practicing? And in the evenings, you know, weekends. Uh, I don't know, Josie, Alexander, or one of them, Avery. Do you got kind of tell us what the that process is like? Like when you start and. How much you practice? Because it is a lot of time, and I don't think people will probably really understand that. Usually, so usually we did it this year because of our tour in New Mexico. We just wanted a break, but usually we start at towards the end of the summer. We start doing our read-throughs. We start casting our people and saying who do we need and stuff like that. Uh, we start the year off with uh, every basically every day. 5.30 to around 7 uh, on mon Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And then uh, as it gets closer to competition every day, then all day practices on the weekends. So, except for Fridays. <laughs> well, it just it doesn't, I mean, it, it, it amazes me that you guys are willing to put that into it. And obviously it's worth it. Um, you guys do just an awesome job, but I know that there's a lot of hard work and so much that goes on when people aren't watching at the practices and the read-throughs and, and everything that you guys do, and, and we all get to just show up and watch the show, but there's so much more to it, so it's just really impressive what you guys do, I mean, year in and year out, and what you did this year, and it's always I can't wait for people to see it, because... Mr. Paris kept telling me how bad it was. <laughs> it was. It yeah, was. Yeah. It Every was. day. Well, last year it was a complete disaster too. But well, not, it was. It was, but you can do a play like that one, and it doesn't matter. So, so now, so now, yeah, you're. This one has to work. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, they they work really hard, uh, and so that makes my job easy, you know. But yeah, I'm really proud of them. Yeah, we are too. Are you going to perform it for the elementary students? Uh, I don't that's know. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a... We may have that up. That's, no, sounds like you are. So. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. Well, no, actually, I think it's way better. Wait, some of the children's play. It is. It is. Yeah, Although, yeah, it's, it. it's good for everybody. So, it's not... I kind of lean away from children's shows because <laughs> it annoys me. <laughs> so, uh, so it's there's some good stuff for adults too and, and high school kids. So. Well, you guys, you guys represent us well. We're super proud of you all. Yeah. And, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I don't know if you told you, but at the at the state, did you tell them what the, what I told you the kids behind me? And I still don't oh. know where they're from. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was there was a group of kids and I'm sure they were getting ready to perform and they said, well, if we lose to that, we're okay. <laughs> so, I mean, that was yeah. like, well, there you go. I don't like yeah, that. I don't know where they were from, cool. but I heard them talking about yeah. it. And so that was so. an album? No, that was the state. Yeah. 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 And that probably yeah. wasn't how the same. Yeah. <laughs> 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 probably. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Good job, guys. We can flip. We can flip. Okay. You, yeah. Unless you want to Unless you had there. listen to the budget, the talks, and other... Uh, I feel like we're okay. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
was passed on at the woods. They should be scared. They won't make them run as hard as they say they heard cross country. They were, they were like, what? <laughs> like, we thought this was over. <laughs> Picture. All right, guys, welcome. So, the board is going to recognize the Cherokee Girls 2A state qualifying cross country team. Get away, coach. Okay, uh, these girls here uh, put in a lot of work. Um, so, I got some parents in here that know they get up early and they um, have to get around and run. We run at 6.30 every morning. Some mornings it's not fun. Some mornings it's cold. Some mornings it's rainy. Those kinds of things. Uh, they take them every day. They, they work hard. Um, we had a rough start at the first of the year, but I was real proud of the way they worked and, and came along and, and qualified for state. Um, we went from we went and ran pre-state uh, about mid-season. I think we were what ninth or tenth something as a as a group, and then we ended up seventh as a group as a team uh, at the end of the year. So I was pretty proud of them. They all cut lots of time off their off their runs, and of course cross country you can't really you can't really go off times all that much because courses are so different. And you have different terrain and things like that, but they all did a really good job. Um, and then Abby um, ended up ninth overall as an individual, which uh, put her in the top ten for the year, which in cross country, if you are in the top ten, you are considered uh, an all-stater. And this is the fourth year out of four high school years that she has been an all-stater in cross country. And that's hard. Um, you know, one, just running you know, two miles and the amount of miles that they log from August through the end of October. It's a long season. Um, and for uh, for these girls, you have cross country that overlaps basketball for about a month. So they're pulling double duty, they're practicing, they're running two to three miles in the morning and then they're going to basketball practice and practicing for two hours in the evening. So it takes a toll and these guys handled it very well. Um, and there's two of them here that didn't originally go out for cross country, uh, but, but I want to give them all kinds of credit because they stepped up uh, later in the season and ran so that we would have a full team um, running because you see May over here with her crutches. She ran all year up to, well, yeah, she, basically you ran all the meets except regionals and state with a torn labrum. Uh, in her hip and ended up having surgery and so I had those two, Kinley and Chesney, step up and say they would run so we'd have a full team which ended up really good because we you know, placed seventh as a team. So real proud of them. All of them. We're going to miss Abby and her. She pushes people a lot but I thought it was a great year. So. It's been fun to watch. The work ethic from all you guys it's pretty incredible um me personally and not just with tessa because she's my daughter but all you girls when i see you guys run and i see your face and uh I tell you i you know as a runner back in the day long time ago long time ago, <laughs> i i know that feeling and to see your guys' faces it 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 brings tears to my eyes when i when i see you guys kicking in that last 400 yards or whatever. I know. It's, I'm, I just I see you guys leaving it on the on the field, and it's it's pretty impressive to watch. Yeah, like I said, it's not fun to run, especially every morning at 6:30. Yeah. Getting yourself awake and being disciplined enough to be there every morning, you know. Um, it takes a it takes a pretty cool individual to be able to be that disciplined with that work ethic. So we're proud of you guys. Absolutely. You guys do great. That extra time as uh, the one act crew was in here, and as you guys know, because you're friends with a lot of them, they put a lot of practice time in and on the weekends and things like that. So, uh, very appreciative of 
what you're willing to go and do extra. Mm -hmm. And you all represent uh, Cherokee very well. And, um, you know, your pre-run team prayers and just different things that I've seen you guys do over the years, it's, it's pretty neat. You guys do a great job representing our school, so thank you. That's a good example. Well, and you saying that, I'll tell you, this group right here is a real tight-knit. Um, they, they have, they've come together, they push each other, they, mm -hmm. they feel bad for each other at times, you know, they know when each other's struggling and that kind of, this fun, they've been a fun group, they've really come together and, and basically helped each other through a rough season, because it, it is, it's hard to run for three straight months every day, so. I tell them I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 tough for me to drive that gator around. What are you talking about? Yeah. But, but yeah, we're proud of them. Super proud. We want to thank you guys for recognizing us too. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Can you tell us everybody who you are? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm Veronica Castro. I'm Carson Schumacher. And they have us. Well, y'all one senior. Probably me. <laughs> so, I mean, we expect all of you to be back around next year, right? Thanks. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Consent agenda, go through G, and we'll go through those items. Okay, we can start with um, D, the general fund, and the things, uh, uh, just, just basic things, uh, nothing really uh, out of the ordinary uh, on this list for general fund. Child nutrition, uh, that's Keystone, uh, just the same as every month. We haven't had anything in there. Uh, 
different. Uh, activity fund report. I think you know, we're getting ready to start basketball season, so we'll have a few more things going in and out there. But, um, Kendra, was there anything specifically? No. The activity fund report out of the ordinary this this month? No. Okay. Samantha went to make copies of the treasure oh, for them okay. because I forgot to. I emailed it. Everybody that didn't print it, sorry. I can come back with that when she gets back. Um, on G, uh, fundraising request, uh, football program, we would like to sell school spirit flags. Uh, there's a couple examples there. One would be red. The one that has cheese on it would be red. And the one that says Cherokee, uh, it would be black with our chief logo. It looks pretty sharp. Those are really they're nice flags uh, that people can put out in the yards. Um, they're three by five, really good quality. Um, and we would sell those for about $50 a piece. Uh, but like I said, good, good quality uh, flag there. You want to show them the example? So you three by yeah, five. Yeah. I can get it. I've got one here. As of right now, uh, you said it's easier to do the orders online. We could probably come up with a form, uh, the company that would work with is pretty, pretty easy to work with. So if we need to do you know, something different there, we could do that. But I, I'd like to just kind of keep that open to where we can, you know, it may not just be for two weeks and then it's up. Everybody got the email on the activity fund, didn't they? Did you guys get to receive the treasury email? report? Or the treasury report, I'm sorry. seen it, I'm okay with continuing if you guys don't have anything you want to look at on this piece of paper if you've seen it in an email form. Sorry, I have to have Thank you. 
motion to approve A through G. Okay. I made a motion. Desiree, second. Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number four, discussion and vote to approve the 23 board meeting dates as listed. Most of these will correspond. Uh, most of all will be on Mondays. There are three that are on Tuesdays. Um, and I did that kind of looking ahead at our, our activities schedules and uh, I know there's three and, and myself included that have kids I know they're going to be involved in activities on that day. So I did mm -hmm. set those uh, for Tuesdays um, ahead of time and then all meetings to start at 6 o'clock. So. I guess that's worked okay for everybody at 6 o'clock. Have you guys been through it? You don't want to meet at 10 30 in the morning? Right. Seven o'clock in the morning sounds great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you guys have any thoughts or concerns on dates, time? Okay. Does he's made a motion to approve? Heather second. Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number four, discussion and vote to amend the 22-23 school calendar. So what we have talked about, what we would like to do is we have the hours built in. The Friday back after Christmas break that we host our tournament, that Friday gets pretty pretty chaotic. Um, and so we've, we've talked about this for a little while. Is uh, we are in school on that Monday when we come back, um, but we would we would like to take that Friday off and just make that a no school day. Um, it would really eliminate a lot of issues, especially in this building, um, that go on during that day. We just there's a lot of people in and out. Um, just, What's the date? It's January the sixth. So what we're wanting to amend there is just. Uh, take January 6th and that would be a no school day. It won't affect any of our other calendar days. We wouldn't have to make that up. We have the hours built in and we still have plenty of snow days built in too. Um, if we do have some bad weather, uh, it, it should affect that. So, there that to add to and we talked, just coming back from Christmas break, talking to Ms. Patterson for those little elementary kids. A five day week after two weeks off is hard. So, our goal on that is to have the elementary come watch basketball Thursday afternoon and then Friday. I'll just make it a little bit easier for everybody, I think. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns? All right. I'll make a motion to approve uh, January 6th, no school. Okay. Does there a second? Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number six, discussion vote to approve the working budget for the 22-23 school year. Um, and we approved the estimate needs uh, prior, but I want to bring this to you so uh, you all have a copy uh, of that in front of you. Uh, really just to kind of give you a um, picture of where we are financially and kind of where I expect us to be and what this year would look like. Um, I'm not going to read through that entire thing, but I'm just kind of going to hit the high points of the analysis page. Um, you know, we, we're, we're coming out of our, uh, the financial hole that we were in. And so uh, we did, we had a $743,000 carryover um, this past year. There's going to be some things uh, that could increase that. Uh, we believe, when I say we, uh, COSA and, and other administrators um, that talk and about state aid, and we don't get a lot of state aid, what we get is comes in the form of, uh, you know, salary incentive aid and transportation aid um, on that formula worksheet. Uh, it's believed at this time that there will be an increase uh, in state aid. And so we could see that go up uh, depending on, you know, what that 
amount increases by will depend, but you know we, we could see anywhere from uh, maybe a $35,000 to even a $60,000 uh, increase in what we do get. Um, so I do think it's mid-year adjustment. Uh, we will see that, and I think we will get an additional amount. So that's good news there. Um, right now, with the weighted ADM, uh, there for a while, uh, you would get to use your highest uh, enrollment numbers um, out of about a three-year cycle, and now that, that that's changed, and so we go off you know, the previous year's numbers, and, and so our enrollment numbers are staying pretty consistent. So there's not going to be a lot of fluctuation in those numbers right now uh, when it comes to that, but, but that's kind of how that, that works uh, from year to year. Um, you know, gross production has been up. Um, it's been up for quite a while, and that's been great. Uh, we ended the year last year strong and seeing some higher numbers in gross production collections. That's continued. Um, I think that that's going to continue for uh, for at least you know the next four months, uh, which is going to be getting really close to carrying us all the way through the fiscal year. So our gross production collections are going to go up, uh, I believe, from what we even collected last year total at this point. Uh, but as I've kind of noted in here, you know, they are volatile, and so at some point in the future, you know, those, could, those things could go away. So while we have that extra money coming in, uh, I want to make sure that as we're budgeting and the things that we are investing money in is that we're not over committing ourselves to using gross production funds uh, to a point where when those would go down, if we had a bad year, um, we would have a general fund balance and carryover that that would help us through that, if that was to happen. Um, like I said, as of right now, it's coming in. Uh, it's been a lot better. Um, so our estimated general fund expenses for the year are estimated at uh, just a little over $4.3 million and $4,354,453. Um, and that is approximately 411895 below our anticipated new revenue of uh, $4,766,348. And those, that new revenue, those are just, those are my projections based off last year's collections, based off what we see right now. Um, that's not exactly what we're going to bring in. Uh, could be a little more, it could be a little less. Uh, and, you know, expenditures as of right now, there's, we're committed to, you know, quite a bit of that 4.3. Um, there's some that could change. There are a few things in there that if we had to make some adjustments, um, we could. Having that $411,000, um, you know, kind of cushion there um, below that gives us some room. Um, and we have our carryover fund. But, you know, we're still in the process of trying to build our general fund carryover balance up to that amount where we do feel comfortable that if we did have another bad year um, and had to absorb and we didn't have enough revenue to come in to cover expenses to operate for a year and we did have to use carryover, that we could still do that, um, but it wouldn't completely deplete it. And so we're still trying to come out of that. So, you know, we are still being conservative, but at the same time, we do have a little more flexibility uh, to do some things because we don't, we don't want our, our students right now uh, to go without or not be able to meet some needs because of something that we're worried about happening too far down the road. Uh, we want to make sure that we meet their needs where they're at right now, too. Um, you know, we're still utilizing the federal uh, ESSER funds, and as we you know, kind of went into the last few years, having those funds available, um, you know, that was a blessing to have those and feel like, you know, we were going to be able to utilize those to help us get out of some things that we were in. Um, but now as gross production's coming back, 
our way of thinking about those funds and how we can use those, we feel like it needs to shift. And so we've got some plans in place, uh, some ideas to address some things that um, you know we thought that we needed those funds to address before, but now feeling very confident that we can take care of some expenses uh, that we normally have uh, with our local funds, uh, and then be able to use these ESSER funds um, you know, to, to really go in there and do some great things for kids while we have these. These funds will run out whether we use them or not, uh, and we will use them, but uh, they'll be gone in two years. We have this school year and next school year to utilize those ESSER funds, and then after that those will be gone. Um, and right now, that's about $457,000. That's what we got remaining there to spend over the next two years uh, for that. So, like I said, we have some uh, some plans, and uh, I'll, I'll be bringing some of those plans back to you uh, at a later date, but uh, I think they're very good plans, and, and they're going to be able to address some things that, uh, that we need to address. Um, Set my projections. Uh, you know, moving forward, based off last year's, and they're very close to what our uh, auditor, when he puts together the estimate of needs, uh, they're, they're conservative. Uh, you know, one thing that is in the estimate of needs is the full amount of our ad valorem collections, and we know that that's that's not what we're going to collect because of the protests <coughs> that go on. So, uh, you know. Assessor's office has been great to give me the information that I feel like that we need to really have a realistic idea of what that is. And I did mention that uh, in the paper. I didn't talk about that, but we still have uh, over three million dollars in our valuation uh, that's being protested, and so that really uh, comes out to about one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars less that we would see come to us. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's we're all going to our general fund, but it would be money that uh, most of it would be general fund money. Some of it would be sinking fund. Some of it would be building fund. But um, as of right now, you know, we, we have to kind of proceed as if we're not going to get any of that. But if those things get settled uh, at whatever percentages they get settled on, uh, then we will collect some of that money. Uh, like I said, those have been ongoing for quite some time, but now we're at a point where we're budgeting as if we weren't going to get those things uh, so we're not hit with surprises. Once we get back to that you know, fund balance that we feel comfortable with, I think we could be a little more aggressive with some budgeting and, and we've got a better idea of how some of these protests will go, um, kind of just learning how to <coughs> live with them because um, I think they're, they're going to be here and it's going to stick around for a while. Um, so, you know, all of that being said, um, I, I, I want everybody just to make sure that we, you know, we understand that we're, we're coming out of the hole that we were in and things are looking much better. Um, I know there's always going to be battles along the way, but as we come out of that and need to shift our thinking, um, you know, we need to have a plan as to, you know, what, what the, what's Cherokee Public Schools going to look like you know, moving forward. I mean, we've had a rough couple of years, uh, but we're getting through those things. We're taking care of some of those problems, and now it's time to, to move on. Uh, we're not going to use some of the things that have happened in the past as excuses why we can't do things in the future. And so, like I said, um, I want to bring to you, you know, here in a few months, uh, a more detailed plan. Um, but, you know, we're going to have a district-wide vision plan of what that looks like moving forward. And it's really going to address four, four main areas. Number one would be our budget and our general fund balances, um, but not just general fund balance, uh, building fund, and you know, financially, um, how are we going to be able to do the things that we say we need to do and want to do. And so that's going to be part of it. Um, you know, the other part uh, would be to have some short and long-term <laughs> goals and plans for our facilities. Um, we have some of the nicest facilities for a school our size, but even, even larger school districts uh, in the state. And, you know, I hear that all the time, how great our facilities are. And that's going to take, that's going to take a lot of effort, uh, manpower to keep up those facilities and keep them great. Um, 
you know, things are getting more expensive, so it's going to cost more. Um, and, you know, there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be some short-term needs, some small things that need to be addressed uh, often to make sure that they don't turn into big problems. Uh, but we will have some larger expenses uh, in the next, you know, five to ten years, and we need to make sure that we have plans in place so that uh, we can handle those as they come up. So that, that will be a part of it, too. Uh, you know, academics. Uh, you know, what are we doing? to prepare our kids. You know, right now, you, in high school, you pretty much have two pathways. You have a college uh, prep pathway, uh, and you have a career pathway. Um, and so most, you know, most of our students, they're going to go on to college, or they're going to go in the job force and start those careers. So we need to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our kids right now, um, and we're addressing both of those things. Um, and we take in-depth looks uh, at everything that we're doing, um, all the way down from pre-K all the way to 12th grade, uh, get things aligned. Um, you know, we, we've got such a great staff that will bend over backwards and just do anything for anybody. Um, but every great team needs, needs a direction and where we're going. And so uh, we're going to utilize our people to put together what we feel like are the best academic plans for our students. They're the ones uh, in the classrooms every day, and we feel like you know, they're going to know um, what those kids need, uh, maybe where we're lacking a little bit, what we need to get better at. So you know, we've already had some uh, administrative meetings on just brainstorming different ideas and areas that we can focus on. And that's not saying that nobody's uh, that, you know, not doing their job well in, in any way, but uh, I think as educators, we all feel like uh, you have to continue to learn, you have to continue to grow and get better at what you do. Uh, and so, you know, there's going to be an investment into, you know, our academics and our plans and what we're doing to meet the students' needs, but what we're also doing to meet those teachers' needs so that they can get better. Uh, because, you know, our biggest return on investment will be to put money into our people. Uh, and as they get better, it will trickle down. Everything's going to get better. Um, and so kind of springboarding off of that uh, into the last part um, will be an investment into our school climate and culture. Um, you know, and it's really, are, are we who we say we are? And um, there's a lot of great opportunities out there for professional development, for teachers. Um, there's programs out there that I feel like that we can bring in, we can bring people in. Uh, talk to our kids, talk to our staff, uh, and, and really just, you know, build that positive school culture and climate, um, you know, really so that we can become kind of a lighthouse, I feel like, for other places. Um, and, you know, so all, those are kind of the four main areas. Um, but like I said, as we come out of um, kind of the financial situation that we were in, uh, we need to have a plan moving forward, and, and we do, and it's going to be ongoing, and, and it will need to change as, as anything does and reevaluate it. Um, but we are moving forward. Uh, we don't want to get stuck in a rut. And uh, like I said, things that have happened in the past, it's been a, a rough couple of years, um, but that's not going to be an excuse for us to not get up, dust ourselves off, and move forward. And I feel like that's where we're at right now. Um, so, like I said, this budget, this working budget, uh, I also included some other things in there. Uh, kind of where I came up with some of those numbers, we have federal allocations, and then there are projections. And so allocations are, you know, guaranteed monies uh, that either, you know, your federal allotment or your state is going to allocate to you. Projections are just that. That's, that's what I believe they will be based off last year's collection based off the information that we have moving forward, most up-to-date numbers that we have. Um, and there are a few areas uh, of revenue that uh, I don't always include here because they do change quite often. And so, but most of it is uh, included in there. Um, and that's where that uh, 4.7 in new revenue, uh, that's where that that number comes from. I did not include the full amount of the ESSER money because, like I said, we have two years uh, to spend that money. So um, there was quite a bit of it um, that I think that we could spend this year 
doesn't mean that we won't. And so if we don't spend it, then that wouldn't be, that wouldn't count as revenue for this year, it would count for next year. Um, and then the general fund, uh, our projected expenditures, uh, this is kind of, you know, this is broken out by function, but kind of helps you see really where that money um, is going. And then, you know, the instruction, most of that is, is teacher salary. Um, some of it's going to be, um, you know, for classroom uh, specific things, direct things that go to the classroom, but most of that um, goes towards uh, teacher salaries. Uh, and then support services, again, uh, you know, anything that they need uh, to be supported, and then our operations, those are just, uh, that's, that number stays about the same uh, year to year. The contingency number, I just want to make sure, I included what our um, appropriated amount on the estimated needs was, and that was a, a, a little over 5.5 million. And so you can see that we're well below that, but we really need to look at what revenue we expect to come in and what carryover we had. Um, the carryover is included in that 5.5, but also in that estimate of needs. They also include the full amount of some of those federal allocations. And I'm not including that in my number because I don't expect right. us to spend all of that at once. So there is quite a bit of difference there. That doesn't mean that you know, we're not spending all that money that we would have or that you know, that's, that's what we project our carryover to be is almost 1.2 million uh, in one year. And if we had that kind of money <laughs> coming in, we would, we would find ways to, to spend that on our kids. Uh, like I said, that's, that's for the general fund. Uh, building fund uh, is pretty simple. Uh, we've been utilizing this really as little as possible. Um, at one point, that, that was back down to zero. Um, and right now, if you look at the Treasurer's report, uh, 150000 is there. Right now, we're paying some salaries and then just some hit and miss expenses here and there. Um, I really would like to see us get away from using this uh, as much as possible and allow that to grow because I do think it's part of our facility plan. I think there are some things that we can address within that. Um, but we're still a little ways from a fund balance that will allow us to do that yet. And then child nutrition, we have really we, we have way more money than we need in there right now. And so we're, we're looking at things that we need to do in our kitchen, some upgrades um, while this money is there, and, and that's what it can be spent on. Um, so that's kind of going back to part of the facility plan, but um, we do have some funds there that we do need to spend and utilize there. But right now it's, it's pretty healthy. Um, like I said, this is uh, this is really this working budget. We approved the estimate of needs, which you know we have to do. Um, we wouldn't necessarily have to do this. This is a transparency tool. Uh, I feel like this is something that we can use as a board, um, as a communication tool. And so, you know, you all know what what our goals and needs are, um, and can really hopefully answer some questions about where our money is coming from and where it's going. Um, more than just looking at the estimate of needs and, um, and then at the end of the year, you know, maybe seeing what, where we were at, you know, carryover and things like that. So. Appreciate the breakdown, Bryce. Do um, we have any questions on anything that we went over? I've got one. I just was thinking, um, it's not really a concern, but the federal asset fund of four hundred and eleven thousand and some change. I know it. It's so supposedly it's supposed to be used up by fiscal year twenty twenty four. I worry what happens if they change something and then if we don't use it all, say the first year, and we save most of it for fiscal year twenty twenty four, and then they come back and say, hey, you didn't use it the first year. You know, give us what you didn't use back. Any any chance that could happen? I, I really don't think so, um, because you, I mean, we have to submit our budgets, you know, at the beginning of the year, so, like I said, for this year, we're pretty much committed to spending um, a little over $200,000 of that. Um, I don't think that there's anything there that we would have to worry about with that ESSER, ESSER money being taken away. Mm -hmm. So, we have control of it all right now, 
or just to have. Yeah, we could spend it all right now tomorrow if we wanted to. Right. Uh, it's all available to yeah. us. We, uh, we have to like budget that. the full amount right. every year, but we don't necessarily have to spend on that. So, for instance, our summer program mm -hmm. that we're running at the elementary and then over here for some credit recovery, all of that is being paid utilizing these funds, but we won't have that expense till June. I just worry so that the that. government tighten stuff up that they may try to recoup some money that they may not have to give, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know that they've ever well, I don't know come back. Now, if you don't meet the criteria of a certain right. grant or something like that, you, you could, but Lose it. Uh, I don't see that happening with these. Do you have anything, like, in that situation, if it was that you could think, okay, this is how we're going to utilize it right now so we don't lose it? Well, that's, um, I mean, like I said, most of that stuff is budgeted. Um, the full $457,000 is budgeted in there. But a lot of that stuff is uh, things that, you know, we pay out monthly. Um, we have two LPC counselors um, that we have on staff, and so we're using those. But, I mean, you, you would be talking about some pretty large one-time expenses. Right. I understand uh, that. You I just do that. I mean, like I said, but I, I don't think that it's money that they would come back and take away from us because there's a lot of schools out there that have this money tied directly to salary, I mean, right. salary money yeah. and, and personnel. So, okay. um, you know, and we are. We're using some of that uh, for a few teaching positions right now, but uh, we wouldn't have to. We could keep those positions if we didn't have it. Okay. Any other questions or concerns or thoughts? I appreciate you breaking this down. It's nice to see you guys. Um, if there's no other questions, I'll make a motion to approve the annual budget for the fiscal year 2023. Is there a second? G? Lowville? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number seven, discussion and vote to approve an appropriation for the building bond fund 31 in the amount of 592900 So, if I understand this correctly, is uh, this was left out earlier. There were other appropriations that we approved, and we need to include this so that, excuse me, when the time comes, Data. Yes, that was like about the temporary appropriations that you guys approved at the first of the school year. Let me see. Is that all the info we got on it? Yeah, it's like I said, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. That's going to be pretty much what we have in that bond is just. So, this so being when we get our bill for our payment, that we're able to pay it because it has been appropriated. Right. Or a little packet, is this going to go in the packet then, or that we get from Carol at the end of the year? Or this It'll be included in the whatever next packet is that you get from him, like, okay. our, audit. like audit. our audit. Yeah, so audit. When you, they do the audit of this year, it'll be in there. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I've just never seen that before. Well, it's usually included in the temporary appropriations. That's why that looks different. Okay. <clears throat> They're just doing it by itself. Uh, any other questions on the appropriation for building bonds? No? I'll make a motion to approve the appropriation for the building bond fund 31 in the amount of 592900 Do I have a second? I'll second. Heather, second. Judy? Little film? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Uh, number uh, double seven, which should be number eight, principal's report. <laughs> there you go. There. Um, at the elementary, we had our Title I meeting in our fall festival on October 24th, and we had a really great turnout. turnout. The teachers did the games, games and things this year, and, and we had our annual Title, title I meeting, and it went really well. Um, on the 25th, our 5th and 6th graders took basketball at the Kremlin Hillsdale Festival. On the 28th, we had our spook parade and Halloween parties. Um, just this past weekend, our 3rd and 4th grade football team um, 
one first are the Northwest OK Youth Champs. Um, a lot of spirit behind that. You didn't see the big homecat yesterday and all that fun stuff. Um, they did a really good job. Um, most recently, Donors Choose um, teamed up with um, some federal funds. This happened last year, too, where they um, teamed up with Donors Choose and gave teachers an opportunity to submit projects for their classrooms. Last year, we had lots of teachers do it and get funded, and this year, um, I've had 15 teachers do it, and only one is waiting to hear if they got funded, but everybody else has. So that's up to $1,000 per classroom. So that's amazing. We, stuff is already rolling in. Like it, it's Christmas already for them. So um, things have been going well at the elementary. <clears throat> On the top, just uh, going back over, we already recognize the State 4A1 Act champions. Um, there was a few things that they left out. They didn't mention that they also were the technical award winners, mm -hmm. and they had three All-Staters, Andrew Jackson, Joseph Shelton, and Davin Booty. Um, and like I said, the, the, he said the community performance will be Saturday the 12th at 7 p.m. and Sunday the 13th at 2, and that's there for you. Um, and then Coach Britt talked about our cross-country team and, and how well they did. Um, our fast pitch softball this year received the distinguished academic plaque by having a minimum GPA of 3.5 and ranked in the upper 10% of our respective class. Uh, so that's pretty pretty cool. Um, Cherokee Chiefs will play Hollis in the first round of the playoffs Friday night at, I put 7.30 out, so 7, sorry. Um, I just realized that. Uh, in Hollis, so make plans to, to make it to Hollis. <laughs> Far south and west as they are as you can get. Cherokee Junior High Tournament started today. Both Junior High teams won today, and uh, the Junior High Lady Chiefs will play Thursday at 3, and the Junior High Chiefs will play, not pay, play at 6 on Thursday. Next week, the Rick Brown Invitational Elementary Tournament starts. Um, this Friday will be a Veterans Day assembly at 10 o'clock in the auditorium. Everyone is welcome to come. So come to that at 10 o'clock, stick around for our send-off at noon, or 11.45. I don't think we've come up with the exact time yet. They need to be pulling out of town at noon, so probably 11.45-ish. Um, uh, LifeWise, I put just Life, LifeWise has started coming on Wednesday to talk to 60, what, what? Um, what to talk to 6th and 9th graders, um, they help our students with social emotional learning. Uh, Joe Dooley won first place at the Alba Regional Green Hand Quiz and qualified for the State Green Hand Quiz, which he's already competed in. Um, and then last, it was our, uh, Halloween, Gail Box, who is the mother of the late OU football player Austin Box and the founder of the Austin Box Foundation, um, Mrs. Jordan, knew her from, uh, was a friend of her, she got her to come talk to our junior high school students. Um, about dangers of prescription drug use. So it was it was really good. And then last Thursday, the Oklahoma Shakespeare Company, they contacted Miss Baldwin earlier this year. They got a grant um, to perform in rural schools. So the uh, Oklahoma Shakespeare Company received a grant to bring their short Shakespeare program to rural schools. They came last Thursday and performed a Midsummer's Night Dream for our 5th through 12th graders. And I'm pretty sure they all lived just about an hour and a half, and they, they, they were writing most of the time. It was pretty common. It was, it was a Shakespeare play, so that some of them may have a, had a little bit of understand, hard time understanding what they were talking about. But then they had little break-ins of like casting the parts and all. It was, it was very comical, very good. So I'm sure I've left some stuff out. Um, we are going into football playoffs, and basketball is fixing to kick into full swing. So um, just like to remind that everyone that sportsmanship is about it is everybody's responsibility. Uh, <clears throat> so in talking with that, I talked to an official the other day. He said he went and called a basketball game. He said it was the worst thing he ever said because the OSA say it's not a new rule. They've just made everyone aware of the rule. And he said all the fans just sat on their hands the whole time because everybody was scared to cheer. He said it was, it was the worst game I've ever officiated in because it's no fun. So <clears throat> I just like to, to uh, challenge our fans to be the loudest most respectful fans out there. We're not always going to agree with the official or the coaches, but we can cheer on our students and our and, and our student athletes and get loud, uh, be rowdy, be respectful though. And then I saw another post the other day of a, a school went to another school and 
they left this, the, uh, their bleachers better than they were. And so I want to challenge our fans to not only take care of our facilities that way, but when we go somewhere, leave them better than they, than they found them so that when people say, oh, yeah, that's Cherokee, they're going to come, they're going to kick our tail, and then they're going to clean up for us. <laughs> so I just want to challenge everybody to do that. So. Thank you, principals. Uh, number nine, superintendent's report. Um, just a couple things. Um, you know, we've we've done a little bit of work, like I mentioned, at the softball field. Uh, no real major projects going on. Uh, we have tried to put some temporary uh, fixes in our parking lot. Uh, we've got some poles and some curbs out there, trying to get the parking a little better organized, uh, especially during basketball season. And so, as a temporary solution, we've, we've got poles out there to kind of get everybody lined up. Uh, we're going to work on getting some lines painted, but, you know, those lines don't last very long with the, you know, with the condition that the parking lot is in. Um, so, until we can come up with a little better, better long-term fix, um, that's the solution that we've got. Um, as I mentioned, we've had some planning meetings and talking about, uh, you know, where we're going to go. Um, Thursday, uh, starting at 5.15, uh, the OSSBA uh, Region 2, I believe, meeting uh, will be held here in our high school cafeteria. Uh, the meal will be at 6.30 and should be somewhere around 65 to 70 people uh, and should be over around 8. Uh, we do have some basketball games going on there, so it will be a, another busy night. Um, and then one thing that, you know, I do want to mention, and, and we'll make sure that we get the word out, um, but next Thursday the 17th is when we have our kind of traditional annual Thanksgiving Day meal um, and the cafeteria for the kids, and so uh, we are going to be able to provide that for every kid that wants to have Thanksgiving dinner uh, free on that day. Um, so every student will have, have a free you know, Thanksgiving meal, and you know, our, our hope is that we can kind of have a Cherokee Chief family Thanksgiving uh, day that day, so everybody will get to eat free that day, uh, including our staff, um, if they choose to eat uh, free on that day as well. So that will be on November the 17th, like I said, hopefully that will kind of be a nice thing. It's just a, a way that I feel like we can say thank you to our, to our students and our families um, during that that uh, time of Thanksgiving, so um, lots of good things. They've they've hit on everything. It just amazes me uh, how much just community and school spirit uh, Cherokee continues to show. Whether it's the you know the one act uh, coming back into town with the escort uh, all the way back to the school uh, that gets bigger every year. Luckily, we get to do that every year it seems like, so <laughs> that's kind of fun. Uh, and then to see yesterday the support, uh, even for our third and fourth grade uh, football boys as, as they were leaving, I think there was probably 50 or 60 cars in that line, so um, you know, it really doesn't matter what what the activity is, uh, Cherokee shows up, supports our school and our students, so uh, it's just a great day to be a chief. Thank you, Bryce. Any new business? There's no new business. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Judy? Willow Yes. Jensen? Yes. Collins? Yes. Time? 705.